Welcome to 40s Unfiltered. This is Sean Heineman. And this is Jason Lockhart. What's up, Jason? How you doing, man? And, and just cool and boss, cool and boss. What about you, man? Man, I'm excited about this 40s Unfiltered because today's topic is going to be a good one. And I feel that a lot of men don't discuss. So hopefully we can help some brothers out today. Today, we're going to discuss the Superman complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, for, for those who might not know what the Superman complex is, I'm going to just give a quick definition as I was just doing a little research on it. It says a Superman complex is an unhealthy sense of responsibility or the belief that someone else lacks the capacity to successfully perform one or more tasks. Such a person may feel a constant need to save, and it says in the air quotes, <laughs> others, and you know what we say about save, but anyway, uh, others and, and the process takes on more work on their own. Wow. 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 That's, that's, that speaks volumes, man. That's wow. Wow. Mm. So what do you what do you think about that? Because there's so much stuff and 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 forties unfiltered. This is what we do. This is totally unscripted. And as I read this, I was thinking, man, I still have struggles with this. Yep, like uh, like Beyonce Wilder say to this day, I absolutely I still have struggles with that. Um, and it's so weird because the more the uh, the more you come into a greater self awareness and self discovery you'll begin to see those things uh, un unpacked and unfold in your life and um, those discrepancies that you have, you know, uh, and, and it, it, it is a bit toxic. You know, you may not see it that way. And your intentions um, uh, of doing the acts may not be uh, toxic, but the behavior is toxic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree because I know for me and my life, I've done this for years, right? I've done this for years. But I didn't know, and I was, I'm a big, I'm a big person on self-awareness. That's my thing. Cause whatever you can't confront, you can't conquer, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. My uh, old past used to say, whatever you don't master will end up mastering you. So uh absolutely. It, it, it's definitely something to be uh cognitive and aware of. Um again, like I said, uh just just the 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 greater I dealt with myself and had those uh come to Jesus moments. I began to see myself, uh, and it wasn't actually till, you know, sometime this year, you know, uh, uh, like I said, the pandemic and us being inside, you know, caused us to uh, cause a lot of things to be um, a sifted and, uh, and sifted and brought out of us that we wasn't aware of. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know um, it has really helped because with me and the pandemic thing, my wife. <laughs> You know, we were we were in therapy, like we getting our therapy on, man. Yes, uh, yeah. even still to this day. Where do you think this? Because I believe there's a lot of brothers out here that struggle with this. But where do you think this Superman complex thing come from? Uh, I I I greatly believe that it came from uh, your upbringing, um, your uh, belief system, the way that you were brought up, your childhood, uh, the inner child in you. Um, I think there was some uh, discrepancies and some um, deficits of uh, maybe uh, affirmation, maybe love that that wasn't present, you know, with uh, the uh, parents parents that you had that were parenting you. Um, and uh, for my case, actually, it wasn't even my parents. It was just the way that I was. Um, it was outside of, uh, of my my social surroundings. That that's where I guess the trauma caused me to develop this complex. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm guilty of that as well I know for me growing up I grew up overweight and uh, it's one thing to be overweight as an adult but it's a different ball game when you're overweight oh, as a kid yes because kids yeah. are cruel man brutal <laughs> brutal right and, and I grew up you know we grew up in an era where there wasn't there was no filter right you know nowadays it's like shaming you know fat shaming and all this other stuff nah we ain't had that none of that man none of that none of that man and yeah and, and just to you know elaborate and just uh pick it back off what you were saying Sean yeah it that, that's where you know the damage I guess came in with me um 
uh, as most people know that do know me, uh, I had a very bad dental issues. Uh, my teeth protruded really far um, from, I, I guess, eight, nine, all the way up to, honestly, till I was 31. Hmm. So uh, just think of that time frame. You know, you have people talking about you, uh, calling you names. I've heard every joke about teeth um, that it was in the book um, coming out. And um, that really did a lot of damage to me, man. There were times where uh, I was just afraid to just walk into a public scenery just because of the way that my teeth look. And um, uh, I, I, I will be honest and transparent. It, it was, uh, I believe, a few weeks ago where I had another come to Jesus moment. And I just realized, like, there was things that still bothered me till this day about that, you know, and um, I'm working on that now, you know. One thing about 40s Unfilter, guys, like, hey, we're, we're, we're being transparent as possible and we're sharing things with us, about us, rather, that, uh, that you know, you won't get on a normal podcast. So this is stuff that I'm still wrestling and dealing with now. But however, you know, um, that just really caused me to have a very, very low self-esteem and confidence about myself. So that caused me to be hyper-vigilant on other people's needs. It caused me to uh, not be confrontational. It caused me to uh, 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 get in situations where it, it was one-sided. Mm -hmm. I was a person that was, that needs were unmet, but I made sure that the other person's needs were met. So I'm, I'm sorry, keep on going, bro. No, man, you, no, you, no, you <laughs> in your bag, go ahead. But yeah, so that, that pretty much uh, uh, just, caused me to have this, uh, you know, belief system that I, I had to be the person to make sure that this person felt good. And, and it was in every relationship. It wasn't necessarily something that had to do with my romantic, you know, uh, interest and my love interest, but it, it, it came in every facet of my relationships. Uh, I was always the person that I didn't want to let people down. I was a people pleaser. I didn't know how to say no. I didn't create boundaries. And that caused me to be in a lot of uh, bad situations where I felt really, um, I felt left empty because I, I gave out everything and I didn't get anything in return. Mm. See, you're not alone in that. And that's how I was, I, because I think from a lot of people that I've dated, uh, no shade against anybody that I've dated, you know, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, let me just, uh, let me try to help them. X. Yes. Yeah, let me let me try to show this person that I'm an amazing guy, because I think for for most men and I don't know, tell me how you feel about this. I think when men, when we come into a relationship, we we come into a relationship with a strike against us because so many women have believed that all men are dogs, all men ain't, you know, you know, all this so we come into a relationship, they already coming into the relationship with their guards up. Right. Because exactly. they're like, oh, he's probably a cheater. He's probably this. He's probably that. Men are selfish. Men are no good because women have been so damaged that uh, they come into us like, OK, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, where's the uh, where's the aha moment? Is, you know? Like at any minute, when is it gonna hit? You know, when, when are they gonna come out with the camera saying you've been punked? <laughs> yeah, I can definitely identify that, man. And it's so weird because, man, I was really cut different because, uh, honestly, man, I was on some uh, boys and men stuff. Like at a early age, man, I remember like in ninth grade, eighth grade, man, writing poems to ladies, um, taking my dad's uh, cologne, his friend. <laughs> uh, his cologne on the uh, on on the pages and stuff like that, man, and sending it, man. I would find songs that I know they wouldn't listen to, and I would take the lyrics off of it, and I would write them a poem, and I'd be like, "Hey, I gave this to you," you know. Like, I guess because the uh, the you know at, at that that time we know we're young, we're we're, we're based on phys physicality and 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 the um, the optical uh, part of it. And we're not focused focus on, because we're young, we're not focused on the personality aspect of it. So a lot of girls are like, oh, man, he ugly, man. Look at his teeth. Mm -hmm. So they never, like, date me. But, like, at that time, man, I was just, 
I was on something different, man. Like, like I said, I was sending girls roses to classrooms when I was in high school and stuff like that, man. But I was always rejected, man. And I think that's one factor that uh, we kind of like sleep on mostly. And that's what really causes the complex is, is the rejection piece of it. Um, man, rejection, it, 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 it shows itself in so many forms. And I think with the Superman complex, I really believe that part of the behavior of it is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the root of the behavior is rejection. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm, that's good because I know I've been rejected. And I talked about this in one of my previous videos. Uh, it's something about uh, low self-esteem. But I remember even to this day, here I am in my 40s. I remember this girl in high school I was crazy about. And she told me that, you know, you wouldn't be so bad looking if you lost weight. Wow. And that stuck with me, right? Man. I'm just like, man, this chick I like, she just kind of bombed on me. Like, if you lost weight, I would have a chance. And that was, that bothered me big time. So what I would, what did I do? I was always exercising, always, you know, playing sports, always, you know, well, at least sports with my friends, right? <laughs> but doing all those things. And I remember when I lost weight in the 11th grade, man, you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> couldn't Man. tell me nothing but even even still even even in that it that came from a place of hurt it didn't come from a place because i wanted to do it for my own health i was doing it to try to please this girl wow, wow. And, and i think that's the issue with a lot of us as men we always doing things for women opposed to doing things because we want to facts facts man facts that that, that is so true, man. Um, and even with that, man, at, at, at that time with my situation and uh, discrepancy, which I believe caused, you know, me to act out in this type of behavior, um, I didn't, I, it, it wasn't a fixable, it was a fixable thing, but it wasn't fixable in my capacity of power because, you know, I, I was a kid. So my mother, she couldn't afford braces per what she says, but, you know, she couldn't really afford braces. So that's what she would tell me all the time. So like, there's nothing that I would, I could actually do to fix it at that time until I got older. And I remember it clearly, I, I was in college and um, I was about 23. Um, I believe it was like my sophomore, junior year in college. Uh, but anyway, um, I was laying in my bed and I, I, I heard the, I heard the Holy Spirit or higher power, whatever you may think it may be whatever you do. But I heard the, the uh, uh, Holy Spirit tell me, he said, I'm not going to allow you to get braces until you get married. And I, I didn't understand why. And he said, because this is an humbling process for you. This is teaching you how to be humble. And I didn't really agree with it at that time. I'm like, why am I going through all this, you know, pain and turmoil, people talking about me, people hurting me and stuff like that. And and I have to go through this. And God was just like, I'm teaching you something in this. He said, if you, if I would allow this to happen to you right now, you'll be a totally different person, totally different. And so uh, lo and behold, I got my braces when I was 31 years old. And no, I said, take, take that back, like 34, my bad. <laughs> but nevertheless, like uh, things just changed. I was married when I got them. And like, I was just like, wow, Lord, I mean, th that's what you said. And mm. kind of like, you know, I, you know I, I said that to say, you know, I really believe that at the same time, man, this was all like a teaching moment for us. And, and I don't think we'll be able to be here today to be able to talk to people and share this uh, part of us with people, man, and, and be able to identify this and be able to help others with this, man, if we had no went through that crucible moment, man, and, and experience, man. So. I, I don't, I don't take, I don't, I don't regret anything, honestly, man. I, I really don't. Mm. And, and that's the thing. That's how you know when you heal, when you don't, you, you like, you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world. And, and I feel the same way because there were times when I struggled. Um, even sometimes to this day, I struggle with, cause like they were talking about in the Superman complex, like feeling that other people can't handle their task at hand. And that's not saying that I didn't feel like that with my wife, but I always felt that I didn't always. I, I used to feel like 
okay, I don't have this, I don't have that, like, I don't have the degree, I don't make six figures, right? Like these standards, the social media standards, you know, or media, the way media trains us. Um, wow. So I'm like, let me be effective in other ways. Since I don't have the degree, since I don't have six figures, and since I'm not six foot three, let me make sure uh, that I can be effective in other ways. So whether if that's, um, you know, trying to be romantic or whether if that's uh, trying to make sure that the house is clean, trying to make sure I'm speaking my wife's love languages, trying to add value in other areas because I felt like I lacked in certain areas. And God, and I, I feel like God showed me this, that the reason I don't have a degree is because I am such a self-learner that if I had a degree, I would have leaned more on that than my hunger to learn on my own. Wow. Because wow. I'm a big student of reading and learning, but that always, because I always wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Or if anything that I was going to say, I'm like, let me make sure I, because I have, and this is no, no cap, but I probably, re, I put in my 10,000 hours of reading books. And, right. and learning and things of that nature and writing books. I've, I've, I've written five books, wow. <laughs> you know? So I'm just saying all that to say that insecurity, because I was thinking that I didn't have these things that I had to uh, compensate in other areas. And even that wasn't healthy because it's like, just do it because don't do it because you feel like you don't have these things. You just do it because you want to do it. Wow. That's, that's, that's so good that you said that, man. And, you know, just, you know, kind of coming into my marriage, man, um, uh, I was talking to one of my really good friends and um, me and my wife, we were going through some struggles uh, in our marriage, man. And um, I, I would honestly say, man, 2020, <laughs> 21, and I'm sure anybody, everybody can say this too, that that was a really uh, pivotal uh, point in our marriage, man. And um, it really tried us. Mm -hmm. It I just say, you know, um, we're, we're now seeing the light, man. God is really good, uh, you know, and, that, and that's with basically just coming to, you know, ourselves and um, just, you know, learning more about ourselves, man, and getting therapy and, you know, all that good stuff. But I said that all that to say, man, is that I was talking to one of my good friends and um, she asked me, she said, how did you and um, Jessica get together? Uh, that's my wife. And mm -hmm. um, it's like, uh, I, I told her the story and, um, uh, a little bit about the background of my marriage. My wife, uh, I met her. She had four kids um, that that uh, were not, of course, biologically mine. And when I got into the marriage, um, she had a ready-made family already. And uh, pretty much um, when we were dating or getting ready to date, uh, one of the uh, people that basically put us together, he asked me, he said, are you sure that you want to do this? And I was just like, you know, I, I really wasn't sure, honestly. But uh, we got on the phone one day, me and Jessica, we were just talking. And like the, when, we, when she was talking to me, um, I was just listening to her story. And we just had such of a connection over the phone. And it was just like amazing. Like I, I really got to hear, you know, what she had to say. Because normally when you hear about a person that got four kids, you'd be like, <laughs> what was you doing? You know, kind of <laughs> like, you know, you know, low key you do, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mom, she was like, son, are you sure? You know, she got four kids and this and stuff like that. It kind of reminded me on that, uh, what was that movie? That Tyler Perry movie when he was walking down the aisle and he had that sign talking about, she got kids. <laughs> but, but you know, nevertheless, man, I, I got I got to talk to her, man, and we and we began to chat, man, and just begin to have a great connection and just, just talking. And so uh, she began to share with me her story and how, how all that transpired. And like instantly my Superman complex just came in and I was just like, oh man, this can be just great. I'm this good guy and she's this hurt woman that's in distress that, you know, needs help. And, and I just want to come in and just show her that there are so many good, I mean, there, there are good guys in the world and I can just change the narrative for her and, 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 and we can be this, you know, great, you know, couple and all this good stuff and it's like when I was telling my best friend this she was like Jason out, out of all that time I didn't hear anything about you mm. I didn't hear anything about um 
what's your likes, what's your interests, what's your desires. I, all I heard was how you will help her, how you will be this person for her. And like, man, when I tell you, man, that like really just stuck with me and I was just like, whoa, that is so true. And so like, again, like all of my relationships, even prior to my wife, it was just one of those things where that Superman complex just, just kicked in, you know? And I, I, I'll, 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 you know, let you share some things. No, no, that's good because I'm glad you said that. Cause even, even with me, um, there was a lot of questions about me remarrying so soon, you know, mm-hmm. and I even heard, I remember my brother, he was talking to me one day and it's funny you say this, this is how I know that we're supposed to be connected. I was telling him how dope Clarissa is. Clarissa's my wife. Oh, she's there. She's there. She's there. And my brother said, remember you amazing too. You bring some awesome things to the table too, about who you are. And I was like, wow, you know, Again, this whole Superman complex where I'm like, I'm going to be this great guy. And, you know, and it's not like it's a front or anything. It's just almost as if you wear your Superman complex on your sleeve to a degree. Uh, And I know for me, I'm just like, I am a great guy. I am an amazing guy. And I I know that. But when I get into a relationship, it's like I make it everything about them. Always trying to make sure that they're you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be the perfect husband. Like, I don't want to make no mistakes. I don't want to cause you any pain, but any great marriage or relationship is going to come with some stress. It's going to come with some differences. It's going to, as I heard one therapist says that if you hurt your spouse, it's almost a blessing because they have allowed you to hurt them because you've given them, they have given you their heart. Everybody doesn't get everybody's heart. Wow. So for them to put their heart out there, because think about it, people that you don't rock with, they don't hurt you. No, not at all. Yeah. It's the people who are close to you. So I said, man, that's that's amazing because uh, and and that's the thing about the other shoe dropping, because the other shoe will drop. (laughs) You know, we all flawed. We all got issues. We all got hang ups. And to me, this is just my opinion. I think relationships go south when we put our our spouse on the throne opposed to god right it's when we make them our everything opposed to god like we worship the created opposed to the creator come on romans one come on wow yeah right so sometimes i believe him and god is like let me knock them off this pedestal real quick because you you just done made them they can do no wrong let me knock let me knock him or her off that pedestal and let me show you um how flawed they are just like you before you end up trying to make them as good because the fall is great when you put someone so high on a pedestal the the smallest thing that they do is just like you break into a million pieces yeah yeah but they're human just like you yeah and and you know what man that that's that that is the essence of uh what true love is a lot of times we we just think that in our finite minds we think that love is just a um uh a somewhat of a happy uh utopic if that's the word expression mm-hmm. utopian really. i guess yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> love, love hurts sometimes man like you no know, like when like you have to you know have uh difficult conversations you have to you know do some things like Prime example, when you get into surgery, man, there's going to be some areas that they tap into and they touch and they do that's going to hurt you. But ultimately, it's to heal you. And that's the same about love, man. Like, you know, when we allow our uh, ourselves to give um, our spouses some grace in the capacity in the areas that they're not healed in, the areas that they're not so great in. You know that man. That's that's the whole ministry of Christ. That's the whole ministry of like love, man. And um, and uh, with that Superman complex, honestly, man, that's what it is. It's it's a lack of love. It's a lack of loving yourself, and it's a lack of it's 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 a deficit of um of of love, man. And like one thing that really blessed me, man, a few weeks ago. No, actually, it was last week. Um, I noticed that sometimes I even struggle with. Uh, receiving love, like believing that, 
you know, I deserve it. You know what I'm saying? In some areas. And, and that's definitely one of the um, uh, symptoms or signs of the Superman complex. It's like you, 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 you work so hard to please that person because you do not feel that you're worthy of, of receiving their love. So you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that they do that for you. But at the, at, at, on the other spectrum of it, you're not feeling that you're worthy to receive their love. Yeah. That, yeah. That's true, man. And how, how do you feel about self-love? Like, what does that look like? Because there might be somebody that's watching this and they like, I don't know how to love myself. What, what do you think? Uh, I, I'll say one quick thing, man. Um, if that is something that you're struggling with, man, whoever I'm, ta- whoever I'm talking to, um, if that is something that you do struggle with, man, the first thing that I will tell you to do, man, is to know if, you know, if, if you do have a relationship with God, man, just know, man, God loves you. God loves you. If no one else loves you, man, it was a book that I was reading, man, and uh, they, they were just sharing with me. They were just saying, you know, when your spouse, you know, spaz out on you, man, and they abandon you, they make you feel like you're unloved, man, know that God loves you. God went to great measures to die on the cross for your sins, man, to make that final atonement for you, man, to show you that he loves you. And then my second thing I would say to you, man, is just learn how to create boundaries. That is the one thing that really will be a, um, I guess, an alka to the to the heartburn <laughs> of Superman complex, man. If you learn how to set boundaries, learn how to say no, it's okay to say no. That's one part of, of loving yourself enough to say, okay, look, man, hey, you can only come this far because if you come any more further, man, it's, it's going to release some, some toxicity. And, you know, I'm, I'm not about that in this season, but, you know, you have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to set those boundaries. Boundaries are great. Boundaries protect you and the other person. You know, like my father used to always tell me, when you're driving the car, you have to drive for yourself and the other person. And that's all boundaries is, man. So I would just leave you with those two things right now. Like if you work on those two things, I promise you everything else will come into play. But just, you know, know that God loves you in spite of everything. He loves you and you're great to him. Uh, uh, the Bible even says you're the apple of his eye. I'm not necessarily trying to preach or go there, but, you know. <laughs> Speak that truth, brother. So, you know, just, you know, just stay in that, stay in that flow, man. And also, again, you know, create your boundaries, set your boundaries, set your boundaries. And I, I would actually try to educate myself and look at find books that talks about setting boundaries. Because that's one, again, thing that, you know, uh, I myself still struggle with. Mm-hmm. Still, I haven't arrived. I have not arrived yeah. at all. So, no. yeah. We're all a work in progress. There's a book by, uh, I forgot their first names, by uh i think henry cloud and john townsend it's called boundaries wow. uh, they have boundaries in marriage they have boundaries with your kids i believe but uh it's called boundary henry cloud and john townsend the marbles i'll make sure i drop the link below um for people who might want to purchase that book because it helped me tremendously i never understood boundaries until i read that book so wow. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think the biggest hang up with boundaries is people are afraid to say no because they're afraid they're going to lose somebody. Oh, they're man. afraid they're going to lose. That's why. I, that's why. And, and hear me out, ladies. Hear me out. Let's just go here for a second. Um, You are worth more than just sex. Right. So say if if he's like he want to sleep with you, you don't have to. Like you, you don't owe that to nobody. That's 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 your decision. Now, what you choose to do is what you choose to do. But don't be afraid to say no because that's gonna again put your boundaries in order. Hey, I'm not about that. And even even with guys too, you you ain't gotta sleep with her just because she's willing to give it to you. You know what I'm saying? She could put some, you know. And I know this ain't popular teaching, but they they will look at you different because she's like, oh, I I you know I give it up. He like. I don't need to sleep with you. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's just a simple, that's just something simple, but boundaries, don't be afraid to say no. And I had to learn that the hard way. And and even sometimes, because as they say, no is a complete sentence. Um, And even in those boundaries, uh, people either going to respect you or they're going to leave. This is the quickest way to get people out of your life and know people who are with you or who are for you. 
because when you tell people no, if they can't receive your no, they they not they not for you. You know what I'm saying? They always want you to do stuff for them. It's okay to say no. So yeah, it, it, it's it's okay to say no. And it's so weird. My wife, she always um uh when she talks about me to people, she always tells them that I'm the type that uh if she woke me up at two o'clock in the morning to ask me to get some ice cream, I would do it for it. And I mean, granted, I would because that's just the type of guy I am, and I I, I love my wife. But I do know that part of that behavior that I displayed was because of, you know, the, the, the Superman complex. Let me, let me go out the way for you. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, now that I've created a boundary, you know, it's okay to let her know. She won't, she, she'll be fine. But, you know, you, you have to get to that point, you know. But like I said, it, 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 it's a process that you, that you have to go through, man, it, you know, and, and, and in all that, you know, being said, man, you know, it's just something that, you know, you have to to learn and just and just grow and grow with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe my Superman complex came from childhood, from uh, not being able to voice my opinion, because I grew up in that era where you do as I say, not as I do. And you when I'm talking, shut up, you know, this kind of thing. And you don't have an opinion. Not so much of trying to be a smarty, smart aleck or anything, but it's like what she said. Like I didn't have, I couldn't speak what I was dealing with. Yeah. Because that, yeah, because that's going to cause more time that I have to deal with my mom because now we got to sort through things together. It's requiring time on her behalf to work with me. And she don't have that kind of time because she's a single parent raising these kids. So it's like I said what i said that's it and now i'm stuck with these feelings and don't know how to process it so what did i do when i get into relationships whatever she said that was that was just that was it wow because i one of the reasons i divorced was because i didn't know how to process my feelings where i felt like if i didn't feel like my feelings were valid because if i did state my feelings it's gonna make her feel some kind of way and then it throws us all off track and stuff like that so now you got to have a funky work week or a funky work day because i said something that i needed to address you took it the wrong way and to me that's validating um this is why i don't have a voice Man, that's so good. That is so good, man. Yeah. That is, and I, 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 I've had a similar situations. I didn't voice how I felt because I didn't want to be on eggshells with that person. So, well, and I actually really was because you know eggshells is basically not expressing how you feel and not wanting to, um, and and not wanting to address the way you really feel about something. So you're holding things in basically. And that that leads to resentment, man. Yes. When you a uh, feelings that you uh, that you suppress and that you hold in leads to resentment. Then resentment leads to anger. Then you know anger it, it just all uh, catapults and builds off each other, man. And you know you have to get to a point to man where you can express how you really feel. And 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 again, that's what this complex also does, man. It it allows you to it causes you. I'm sorry to uh, suppress you're really feelings because you don't want to offend anyone. You don't want to make the um, situation uncomfortable for, you know, uh, one another or another person. And so that, that really puts you in a bad, bad place. You know, it, it's not, it's not any self-fulfillment for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing because you have to, and this is where this is a two way street. I believe you should have somebody, especially if you're struggling with the Superman complex, because there's a book, I forgot the guy's name is called No More Mr. Nice Guy. And he talked about how he struggled with being a nice guy and how everything that whatever who he was with, it was gospel, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to do whatever just to make you happy. And then we grow up with this happy wife, happy life thing. Wow. Which isn't 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 helpful in itself, which is very baneful, you know. So I'm just like, no, you have a voice, I have a voice, let's discuss it. And I learned over time that it works your relationship muscle. Having differences, having fallouts, having disagreements, it works that muscle. The only way your muscles grow is if you use them. Yeah. 
Yeah. So opposition. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So there's nothing wrong with having those discussions, but the, the, the catch to it is you, you got to have somebody who's emotionally mature. Wow. And that, that's, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> your, your emotional IQ, man, that, that is a whole nother um, uh, podcast, but yeah, you, you have to have somebody that's uh, emotionally sound to be able to deal with, you know, the complexities that you, you know, may have in your, your relationship, you know, and again, like we're, we're, we're not going to see eye to eye all the time. And, and that's the beauty of things, man. Like God created us all different. You know, we have different personalities. We have different uh, belief systems. We have different ways of thinking. You know, there's more than one way to skin the cat, you know, and and once we really learn that, man, and be able to master that, man, things will flow good, man. And if you look at a river, man, it, it's 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 basically a, 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 a current that is flowing together, that is flowing together. Mm. But but you have you have rainwater, you have uh have water from the uh from from the uh from the lake to come into there so you have different sources of water coming into this one stream and it's all flowing together really smooth I, mean, I got that from td jake so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so but that, that that's how i gotta be man you you have differences man and and if you're not able to to process that man it, it's going to be a long road for you yeah and here's the other thing this is where um people struggle with the gray area because someone can be listening to this and be like, man, I tell her whatever's on my mind. Now that's where you're going wrong too, because sometimes I believe you got to have some tact, right? And you got to have enough deposits. And I talked about this before. You got to have more deposits than withdrawals, right? Uh, That's uh. the problem because many times we focus on the negative. So John Gottman, I believe John Gottman says to every negative to every you got to have i think it's five like positive yeah five yeah. positive comments to one negative comment yeah so yeah. if you yeah so if you're if you spending more time being negative to that person say y'all going on a business trip and you used to being negative to this person and you talking to this guy who you're about to sign this big contract with and your breath stink if you tell your significant other or your spouse, you probably want to put some gum in your mouth before you start talking to this man, it's going to throw them off kilter. They're going to go off on you. They're going to go off on you. But if you have always made more deposits than, than withdrawals, if you say, hey, babe, uh, here's some gum right here before you talk to this guy because this contract is big for us. She ain't tripping. She like good looking out. You see how that plays? See how that works? Facts, man. Facts. Facts, man. My, my wife, she, I mean, we, we're to that place now, but like, she'll just be like, hey, but here. And I like, I don't think nothing of it because sometimes I can't decide if she just being nice or she give it to me with my breath stick, you know? So, yeah, like, it, it's, it, it, that's how it works, man. That, that's, that's a really good analogy, bro. Really good. Really good. Yeah, <laughs> man. I believe there's a lot of guys who struggle with the Superman complex because. As especially, and this isn't no knock on single parents, I'm just saying, I think especially if you're a young man and you're growing up in a single parent home, everything mm-hmm. you do is to please mom. Right, exactly. And, and 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 correct me if I'm wrong, statistically, there's more women teachers than men teachers? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in education, I believe it's like 80%, actually. Mm. Is there, predominantly, you know, ran by women, 80%, yeah. That's why, you know, that's a, a whole nother uh, subject and topic, but that's why you see a lot of uh, young boys that are, that, that there are more boys that are diagnosed with, you know, learning disabilities than it is uh, girls because, you know, you know, you know, there's a certain connection that men have with other, with young boys. So exactly, exactly. But mm-hmm. um, yeah. So, wow. yeah. And, and, and in saying that, and this isn't no knock, I'm not, you know, so if y'all would listen, don't come for me. All I'm saying is we're trying to help some people. So what happens is with young boys, they have, uh, so you you come out the womb, you please mom, dad isn't there. You go to school, you want to make Miss Johnson happy, right? You go to college, you making everybody happy, you know? So once you start getting into relationships, you, you don't even have an identity. Your identity is based on what other people say about you. 
wow, that's so good, man. But but when you have a man that speak life into you, man, you you can there there real quick. I remember Kobe Bryant was talking about Kobe talked about how he the first time I think he went to a summer league or something. And don't quote me on this, but I was listening to his story and he sucked like he was trash because these kids were they were killing them. They were uh, 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 real. um, They were like, you know, tough guys. They like the old school Pistons and Kobe wasn't used to that. Right. Got roughed around. And he said he's crying or whatever. And he, you know, came over to his dad and his dad said, you know what? I still love you. No matter if you suck at this or not, my love for you not going to change. He thought his dad was going to be like, you ain't that. And then, it's, you know, and going off on him. He's like, man, look, life happens. I love you. No matter what you do, if you want to continue with this thing, like I got you. Kobe said that changed everything for him. Wow. You know, wow. so and this isn't a, not to take away from moms or anything of that nature, but it's something about when another man speaks life to another. I would not be the man I am today, Jason, without mentors and people who held me accountable and people who told me I could and people who checked me when I got out of order. Wow. The Bible, my Bible says, man, uh, that, that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. counsel. You, you, you need you need wise men. You need wise women. You know, just why just the wisdom of the elders, man, to, to speak life into you, man. And I think that's kind of where um, a lot of us fall short in, man. And, and, and it develops mm-hmm. these um, uh, complexities that we have, man, uh, as far as our personality and our belief system and the way that we think, man, uh, it comes from broken homes. Again, like, you know, the, the, the mother, she, she can't do it all by herself, you know, and the father, he can't do it all by himself, man. And, um, and I just think that's just, just really one of the number one tactics of the enemy, man, is just to separate and put a hedge, you know, in, in, in the, in, and make a, a broken family, a, a, a household thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it, it's really sad, you know, but, um, I was going to uh, just kind of say also, too, man, I, I do remember like one relationship that I was in, man, that um, like I said, every relationship that I actually was in, I say with the exception of one, I re- uh, the complexity really didn't display itself. But the relationship that I was in right before uh, I found uh, my wife, um, it was, was with this one young lady. And, uh, it was really it was really crazy because I believe she dealt with the women can also deal with this, too. Yes. And. I want to put that in out there too. And uh, well, the, the young lady, she, we were like six years apart actually. And, uh, and basically how it all started was just really honestly, to be honest, we, it was just strictly six. And uh, she was younger and, you know, uh, had more energy, like, you know, so, I mean, I'm keeping it real. So like, so. Nag- and so it was strictly, you know, like six, I would pick her up, you know, she knew what was, what was up and, that was that. And it developed into a relationship and um, come to find out just, you know, a little bit of background from, from her, like her family, uh, her father had died uh, when she was, I believe, 15. And so he was pretty much the heart, the 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 pillar of the family. He did everything. And so when he left, like everything just kind of went chaotic. So uh, I was, you know, six, six, seven years older than her. So when she saw me, Guess what she looked at me as? A father. She looked at me like a father. It wasn't, it was more, it's not necessarily creepy, but it was more so like, I'm your father, kind of like boyfriend kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you what you need because like one thing that is our kryptonite to the, not kryptonite, but one of our weaknesses that we just always um, uh, adhere to as, as men that uh, deal with that complexity is we love women that are needy. Like that's kind of like our our uh, honey to like Winnie the Pooh. Yep. When we see a woman that that needs us, that that's clingy, it's just kind of like we gravitate to them because oh, I can save her, I can do whatever she wants, and and she's gonna love me. And in return, we interpret that neediness as love, and that's where the 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 um the fallacy starts, Miss, because we interpret that neediness as love, and so. Um, it was really weird. We had an exchange. She was giving me neediness when I interpreted it as love and she was giving me sex. And so in return, I was a father to her and I was giving her, 
I get some type of love. So it was an even exchange. And it's so crazy because when you have this complex, you are willing to deal with all the toxic toxicity, all the different personality complexes that this person has, just because you are being fulfilled. And it's really just a deficit of love that you really need. And so what happened was this, this lady here, she, when I say went from zero to 10, like in seconds, there would be times where I would like, I remember one time, you know, I, I got this card from JC Penn. <laughs> her mom kicked her out, right? So she was living with me, man. We were living our cars together and all of this stuff. So uh, we went to JC Penny and I spent, I know, 80% of that card on her. And I didn't know anything about credit. I mean, I was just, just dumb, young and dumb. And so uh, I bought her all these clothes, man. And so we stopped at the gas station and I didn't buy her the soda that she wanted, right? She got out the car, like swung on me, cussed me out in front of everybody while I was pumping gas. I was so embarrassed, man, and like so furious at the same time, man. And, 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 and it was all because she didn't get what she wanted. Mm -hmm. And it just really just allowed me just to really see like, dang, man, I allowed all this to happen because again, I was being fulfilled. Like there was a, there was a need that was being met. And it's just so crazy how us as human beings, man, like if there's a need that's being met, like we'll take whatever. We will take whatever. Just imagine if we transferred that to God because he says he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So just think if we transferred that energy to God, man, and, and took whatever the enemy thrown at us, whatever came our way, and we still serve God with all that energy because he does supply all of our needs. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead and go. <laughs> no, he does. Come on now. No, no, you preach yeah. Leave your cash app in the bottom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, in there, like I said, man, it, it didn't allow me time to heal. I came from that relationship because I, I literally opened my eyes, you know, um, the, 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 the veil was taken off my eyes and I began to see things, uh, for how they were, man. I, I had bridges burnt. I had great relationships, great rapport with people, me, but my affiliation with her caused a lot of, uh, relationships that I had to go South. I had friendships, like literally like end. And, you know, at, at one time I fought at them for that, but at the end of the day, like, you know, it's okay for them to part ways. I, I was toxic. Who I was dealing with was toxic. So yeah, it's okay. That's a, that's a part of self-love, self-care. So, but now those, those relationships are back, back established and back together. But I said all that to say, man, the veil came off of my eyes, man. But I guess there was still that part in me that was like learning and yearning. So I moved from her and I went to my wife and my wife was the total opposite, independent. Grown, sexy, all of the above, established. Like, you know, she she was good. And it's like, it left me in the place to where, dang, you don't need me. I'm hurting so bad. So now I had to reverse the flip. I had to flip it up and reverse it. Mm -hmm. I, said like, anyway, I, I had to reverse it. I had to like put all of my energy to get her to like love me. You know what I'm saying? It, it was so weird. And and it's like, you know, like I said, throughout, we've been married uh, uh, prayerfully December 4th, it'll be 10 years. Um, we've been married for 10 years, man. And it's like, again, I'm learning myself every day. And, 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 and man, it, it's, it's been, it's been, it's, it's been real. And like, you know, us coming into this marriage, man, you know, like 10 years is, is, is big. Well, to me it is. Heck and big. <laughs> based off of our backgrounds and where we came from and like normally you know that's how i know man that god has a plan for you know you know not, not just this marriage but you know people that are are two broken people that came together you know and 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 god god worked it out you know and i, I want to encourage anybody that's married you know that that's that still feels broken, you know what I'm saying? And, and your spouse still feels broken, y'all going through whatever. Like, God can do it. Come he on really. Now. <laughs> so, no. yeah, man.
No, that's no, that's real. Believe me, because um, and I always tell people, you know, marriage is nothing more than two broken people extending grace through love, through God's love. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I think when when we realize that when we can come off our high horses and we have issues too, we learn to extend grace. Yeah. You yes. know, but sometimes you sometimes you have people that's arrogant and they think they don't have any issues. And everything is always, you don't do this and you don't do that. And it's like, no, you flaw too. You flaw too. You, yeah. You jack. yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. No, and that's that, uh, you know, just like the scripture where they talk, we, I, I forget, I think it's James where he talks about the man that looks in the mirror and does nothing about it. You know, <laughs> you have to be willing to do the necessary work. I tell people that relationships are only as healthy as, as the amount of work that you put in and being intentional. You got to be intentional every day. Every day you wake up, you got to be intentional. intentional. If you put your marriage on autopilot, everything is going to tear your marriage apart slowly but surely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's that movie called with uh, Adam Sandler? He had the remote control and he would put himself on autopilot. Click. That was my movie. Yeah, man. I, it, you know what? It's, it's so weird because like that that movie administered to me like in both in both aspects. Once I became more uh, aware, um, I, I began to see like, dang, like that was that was me. Like I'll just sit there and just kind of like cruise through life, you know, and just autopilot. And it's kind of like, dang, you know. And and before you know it, man, life will pass you by, man. You you'll begin to miss out on some really you know, important, you know, monumental, you know, um, times in your life. If you don't, you know, be intentional, you know, man, you have to, especially when you're in your forties, right. <laughs> you got to be intentional because life will get past you. And, and, you know, I know there's, you know, might be some young folks listening as, as the old folks will say, just keep waking up. You, you, you'll be our age. <laughs> I, I always tell because I feel like, but you got a whole bunch of grass. You're like, just keep on living. Just keep, keep on, on living. Man, this this uh Superman complex, I'm glad we had this conversation. Uh, because I do want men, I do believe that because this is something I found out too, that a lot of times the energy we put out is what our wives are going to receive, whether good or bad. So yep. change starts with us. That isn't to put pressure on men. But I do believe that uh, because me and I always talk about they want to be leaders and all this other stuff. I'm the head of the household and all this other stuff. Really? Well, change starts with you. Absolutely. You know, now you can't control her, but you can't control the temperature in your house because a woman is always going to multiply whatever you give her, good or bad. Add favor. Favor to your flavor, man. And just remember, man, you, 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 you are the you are the prophet, you are the priest, and you are the king of your house, man. The mm -hmm. prophet just Things that, man, you, you you foresee what's about to happen. And so God will give you that insight, man. And all the priest means is that you go before everybody in your house. You go to God before everybody in your house and you begin to pray and you begin to declare and, and begin to, you know, put things on, uh, um, uh, decree things on them as a king. Mm -hmm. So that's all it means, man. You just take your throne, man. Take your role in the house, man. Take, you know, take authority. Take authority, man. Whatever's lost, man, you can get it back. Whatever's missing, man, you, you can get it back. Yeah, and I agree. And I think the way you become that is being connected to other men, seasoned men that can help guide you along the way. Because uh, that, like you said before, I think that is something that we are missing. And we have this Superman complex because maybe we didn't have those men in our life to, that would teach us who we are as men and to take pride in, in who we are. So I think that's mm -hmm. very important. Um any closing comments? Anything, anything that you feel that uh, you want the audience to hear, man, before we close the show? I, it's been amazing. Uh, no, nah, I mean, like I said, man, just, you know, learn to create those boundaries, man. Learn to love yourself, man. Um, I saw a, a, a lot of times Kevin Gates said some very throwed out stuff. But uh, for the most part, uh, I, I like some of the things he says. But he said one thing that really just uh, encouraged me and it touched me. He was like, man. You know, I'm, I'm in the best relationship right now. I'm in a great relationship right now. And he was like, with who? And he was like, with myself. And he was just saying, man, the 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 greater relationship that you have with yourself, man, and learn yourself and love yourself, man, 
you 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 can you can project that on others, man. Whoever you're dealing with, man, because you love yourself, you'll be able to love them better, man. Even in marriage, you know, a lot of times we 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 and I I lost my way, like you said early in the um in the podcast, man. We we begin to set our spouses upon this um, altar, man, and, and and begin to lose ourselves and and you know I don't want to say worship them, but yeah, in essence, yeah, worship them. Yeah. And, don't lose yourself, man. You know, you know, don't lose yourself. Yeah. You're just. Yeah, that's that's good, man, because it's something I always tell myself uh, uh, whenever I feel like I'm losing myself, or I'm getting off track or I'm getting caught up in what the world says. Mm-hmm. Um, I always tell myself I am love. Man. I am <laughs> love. And, and, and when I say that, I'm saying that more of like, you know what? I love myself enough to give love to other people. You can't pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. So if you're full, then you can disperse uh, accordingly. So that's just something that I I do for myself. Uh, Real quick, I heard uh, Mel Robbins. She's a popular author, Mel Robbins. I heard her on a breakfast club one day. And she said she has this method where, and it sounds kind of corny, but I find myself doing this because I'm like, whatever, um, if I need to make a change in my life, I'm willing to try new things because you can't open right. uh, what they say. You can't open new doors with old keys. Yeah. Um, she said something that tripped me out. She says she go in the bathroom and she gives herself a high five in the mirror. She said, because when you do that, your body responds the same way as if you were doing that to somebody else. Cause actually you are, you're doing it to you. Wow. Cause you're in the mirror looking at yourself. Wow. And she's talking about, you know, how many people look in the mirror and are actually happy with themselves because you know all the dirt that you did, you know, all the stuff that you've been through. And can you still give yourself a high five and say, I'm, I'm, I'm still worthy or I am the, the ish, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's something personal. Man, that's good. That's really good. That's really good. Well, Michael Ty say it ain't crazy until it happens. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really good affirmations, man. It really, you know, um, uh, that's really good. Mm. Yeah, Jason, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you through social media. Okay, uh, my uh, uh, Instagram is uh, Jackson Heights on uh, Jackson Heights underscore on. Um, I'm a big, huge Eddie Murphy coming to America fan, so that's why I got that up there. Uh, and my Facebook information is just my name itself, Jason Lockhart. Uh, you can reach me. Okay, for sure. I'll have everything linked up. So y'all make sure y'all connect with Jason. I'm excited about 40s and Unfiltered. This is our first show. So y'all make sure y'all share. If you are listening to this, make sure that you leave a rating and review. This is under the Scary to Remarry uh, umbrella. So you will find it under there. Make sure you share this video as well. And give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Give this, Share this video with another man. Shoot, maybe another woman. You never know who you'd be able to help. This is Sean Heineman with Jason Lockhart. (laughs) Peace, people. Take care. All right. See you later.